Super news, everyone. NVIDIA just announced their RTX 40 Super Series of GPUs, and we are getting a super early look at the 4080 Super. I've got everything I need. This super screwdriver to unbox it and install it, this super computer to put it in, and this super laptop with all my notes about it, except I can't really read it from here. I have a super idea. Ah, much better. Let's take a look at this thing, shall we? At the top end, the main difference is not in the spec. For your CUDA cores, tensor cores, shader cores, and ray tracing cores, you are getting increases of 5.26, 7.17, 6.12, and 7.07% respectively. You're getting a 1.59% increase in boost clock speed and the same 16 gigs of GDDR6X memory. The big difference here is the price tag. It's no longer as super overpriced, dropping from $1199 for the 4080 down to $999, meaning that if you want to run your games at 4K, high refresh rate on the latest monitors, this is basically going to be the card to power that. To demonstrate, we're going to get this card installed in the system, then we're going to play some games. But to do that, I have to get back to the other side of this table, which is <clears throat> a much more onerous process than you would probably imagine. While we walk, why don't I tell you about the 4070 Ti Super and the 4070 Super. For these cards, ugh, we're not really getting any pricing decreases. So they're still gonna be at $799 and $599 respectively. But the difference is that we get much bigger bumps to the spec. So the 4070 Ti Super whew, gets to be about 10% faster across the board and gets a bump from 12 gigs to 16 gigs of GDDR6X memory. As for the 4070, well, it doesn't get the memory bump, unfortunately, but it gets by far the biggest spec bump, increasing upwards of 20% across CUDA cores, tensor cores, shader cores, and ray tracing cores. One moment, please, while you check out this message from our sponsor. Thanks to Be Quiet for sponsoring our CES 2024 coverage. If you're shopping for your next PC build or just new components in general, make sure to check out Be Quiet. Their premium products include PC cases, power supplies, water and air cooling, and fans for desktop PCs. With roots in Germany, they've been in the industry for more than 20 years and specialize in making high quality parts that are nearly inaudible. This year at CES, they're showcasing their new white PC cases, white fans, and even white hard drive cages. Step into the world of silent computing with Be Quiet at the link down below. Now all I gotta do is put together my, I don't wanna call it TSA safe because I think it's at their discretion, but I got it through customs and security. Screwdriver and get this bad boy installed. This is a fun fact. While the idle power consumption rated for this card goes up by two watts, the load power consumption actually goes down a little bit. And this is in spite of it being rated to run at a higher boost clock. So the only conclusion I can draw is that Nvidia has managed to refine their manufacturing on these a little over the last year. Speaking of things that have uh, <clears throat> needed some refinement, let's go ahead and get our power connector installed. This has been a bit of a thorn in their side, but my understanding is if you're using the first party NVIDIA adapters, there haven't been any reports of any kind of melting lately. <laughs> let's get this bad boy installed and I don't know, bend it a lot with a heat gun. Don't bend it at all. Depends who you ask. Let's just plug it in. <laughs> I have not personally witnessed any of these melting, but I mean, we've all seen the Reddit threads. Giving myself props for installing connectors properly. Yeah, cool. Let's fire it up. And yeah, we're in a different room. That system was running some kind of conversational AI NPC demo thing. This is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. No, not that Modern Warfare 3. The other Modern Warfare 3, the one that is actually difficult to drive at 4K 240 frames per second. And yet, my friends, here we are. Is DLSS on? DLSS is on. Why do you have DLSS on at this kind of performance level? I get it, NVIDIA wants to show off the performance benefits of DLSS, and to anyone who doesn't cover this stuff for a living, the uh, difference probably wouldn't have been immediately noticeable. In fact, it looks really, really good these days. But here's the thing about the 4080 Super. You don't really need it. I am still getting over 100 frames per second. And this to me is one of the most beautiful things about PC gaming. You can run the game however you want rather than how the you know, console manufacturer or the game developer decides you should run it. For me, 
Oh man, I'm torn on this one because it's already really smooth at 100 frames per second. But on this monitor, this is the new Alienware 4K 240 hertz OLED. Ooh, I'm really torn. I'm gonna look at it again. Good Lord, is that ever smooth. And unlike when you're using DLSS, you know, to go from a native 35 to 55 or 60, you are much less likely to notice any kind of motion artifacts because the natural blur of your eyes makes them pretty hard to pick out. I don't even know who I'm fighting, but it's still cool. Probably that guy, I hope. What, how is he not dead? I saw some, what? How many times do I have to shoot this guy? Oh, he's probably on my team then. No, wait, he's totally not on my team. Where is he? No, this guy's not on my team. How many times do I have to shoot this guy? Oh, brutal. What a violent game. I'm not gonna let my kids play this game. It is definitely the mark of a good hardware demo that I just kind of lose myself and start playing video games. But I can't do that right now because I have something else that's really important to show you guys. This right here is the next evolution in the work that NVIDIA has been doing over the last 10 years on variable refresh rate gaming and more recently, low persistence displays. So what we're looking at is a prototype display from ASUS that runs at 1440p, 360 hertz. But unlike the ones that we checked out recently with those OLED panels from Samsung Display, this is an IPS, which raises the question of how can it possibly have motion clarity this good? Realistically, there's no way to show this to you guys without a full pursuit camera setup, and we didn't bring one to the show. So you'll have to trust me when I say that turning the switch on and off goes from a blurry, smeary mess to clarity that I've rarely if ever seen on an LCD. And what's really wild is they've got the demo only running at 120 hertz with the GPU underclocked. I asked them if they can turn it up and the results were really shocking. Ah, there we go. Now, compared to an OLED, you're still gonna get a little bit of pixel overdrive artifacting, which manifests as kind of like a faint shadow that leads an object as it moves across the screen. But the main image has clarity the likes of which I have never seen on an LCD, and to NVIDIA's credit, may be darn close to those 360 hertz OLEDs, which shouldn't even be possible with the difference in pixel response time. But here's the thing, some of the blurriness that you perceive in moving objects is actually because of your eye, and strobing the backlight helps to alleviate that. So until we can strobe the backlight of an OLED, which to my knowledge has not been combined with variable refresh rate at this time. No, yeah. You would have to drive an OLED much, much more faster than you would an LCD where you have a backlight that you can strobe. And the special sauce of getting this all to work together, variable refresh rate with all the different Oh man, all the different overdrives that you would have to have for all the different color transitions. It's not ready yet, but it's gonna be a contender. Lots of other cool stuff in here, but nothing as cool as getting subscribed to Short Circuit. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't miss any of our other show coverage. I could be that guy and be like, oh, we did a really cool video in AMD's booth. I mean, they didn't have anything that really competes with you guys anyway.